Are you a podcaster? Maybe you've got that big idea and you're looking for a network to join. The multi-award winning Ozcast Network can get your content to eyes and ears all over the world. Join now for the first month free and you could be featuring this sound at the beginning of your podcast. Ozcast. Simply head to ozcastnetwork.com for details. A white man got full of rockin' my piano dead. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. Oh, this hard got hit work to be this good. One more game. One more game. See, I'll take all your fronts out. I swear. You ain't my daddy, are you? There's gonna be consequences and repercussions. What time is it? Damn, damn, poof. Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Don't Be Blase podcast. We are coming to you live from the House of Pain, otherwise known as Snapfit, the Snapfit CBD. I'm your host, Speaker. I want to join, as always, by my man, Steve Burrows. Hello there. Before we get started, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Larry and Lad. Go see the boys in Region Arcade, get yourself an awesome coffee, and listen to some pretty sweet tunes. But for now, on with the show. And we, we have another special guest today. Not just Steve, delivering bad jokes. <laughs> but we have a, a young man by the name of Jared Gibbs. Jared. Hello, gentlemen. How are you? Oh, you got a sexy radio that voice, is, yeah, I didn't yeah, realise yeah, that. I that right in, too. Oh, very nice. Oh, I'm firming as we speak. So Jared's going to join us today because we're going to get to a, a topic that's uh, very close to my heart, and me and Steve have been arguing about it. And so every now and then when me and Steve get too heated, we need a mediator. Jared's our mediator, and uh, now I'm turned on by Jared as well, so we might even have love chat by then. <laughs> we're going to be watching, uh, what's that film you like? By the end of this fucking thing. Which one? Notting Hill? Oh, yeah, for sure. Notting Hill I've on got it on the laptop this? right oh, now. Yeah, we can just... Bees. Just a man standing in front of another man, firm as a rock. There uh, you go. See, that's a line from the movie, Steve. Yeah. If you'd seen it, you would have loved that gag. You would have loved it. But before we get started, <laughs> Steve's going to get us updated on all things Santa Anna. Yeah. Yes. It's time for Lawn Chat. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> oh, we've got a live audience here and everything. Yeah. Yes. Now, I just learned that uh, my boy here, Jared, is a fellow electric uh, lawnmower guy. There we go. There, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, I like, I like how you said lawnmower guy and not man. <laughs> just, just a guy. Just a guy. That, just a guy. Yeah. yeah. Not, not a man. Not a manly man. Yeah. But, you know. Well, I was about to throw Max out last night <laughs> yeah. because I uh, did the first low cut. Um first low cut uh, in its history the, the the back lawn yep and um it was battling yep. let me tell you it was battling hard well you did send me a photo it did yeah. look like a nicely combed lawn <laughs> it did, i yeah. don't know if anything got cut off the top but yeah no nah, it filled up a whole the big green council bin the whole yeah, thing yeah. filled up i had to sit you know got my little girl stood on it squashed it down a bit <laughs> filled some more up it's it packed see the electric moral brings families together <laughs> do you understand this <laughs> You've missed this point. Yeah, I just, well, I, like I said, I live in an apartment, so I don't, I, I don't have any garden to look after, no yeah. maintenance. Half the reason why I live in an apartment, because I'm lazy. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm, I'm, in, I'm intrigued by the electric lawnmower. Yeah, so I got, I got the back lawn done, so I'm very happy that because we've got Easter coming up, we've got a few people coming over, they're like the family members, so you know, so it's a good time to show it off. And, yeah. Uh, and then yeah, the front one I got I got some water on it at least. I go. got some water on it because <laughs> we had a lot of lot of complaints, a lot, a lot of concern over the week. Yeah, you know people going in. Oh, how Steve's front going? You know what's going on with the front? <laughs> Is are the, the, are the there yet? Exactly. Are the guys down the road making fun of him? You know what's going on with the front? <laughs> you know th- these are the things that people need to know the answers to. Steve. Yeah, there's a good there's a good chance I'm getting teased in the <laughs> in the Virginia Lawn Weekly. Yeah. Um, it's going to go around to the local with, messenger. Yeah. <laughs> got neighborhood mock going on. Yeah, nice. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but otherwise, yeah, I've got some water on it. Pretty happy with it. Um, we'll probably get the mower on it on Monday. There when, we go. When, 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 hopefully, I think a lot of people on my street go away for the long weekend. Yep. So I'm hoping they go away, <laughs> quickly plug it into the wall, quick 10 minute jobby, and then uh, back I, in the garage before no one ever noticed. I thought that was going to end with hope they go away, steal their lawns, yeah. uh, relay it, no one notices. <laughs> You've seen fun, fun with Dick and Jane? Yeah, That's yeah, one yeah. of the funniest scenes. Everybody yeah. goes out there and just pinches the a little bit of everyone's <laughs> lawn as the old lawn's patchwork. That was good. That was a good, good call from you, yeah. Steve. Well, before we get into our, our major topic for today, we're just going to touch on some uh, current events. Mm. You know, because we are topical on this show. By the time this show comes to air, though, <laughs> it's probably going to be well overdone. But, thoughts, boys, on the Australian cricket team fiasco. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll throw it to Jared. What do you think, Matt? Well, I'm not a massive cricket fan. Yep. But I love sport of all ilk. So, the fact that someone is really bringing down a national team that I know others are really passionate about... Yeah. I'm, Never ignored my Facebook feed so much in my entire life, but that's <laughs> fine. Um, I understand where they're coming from. So if it was to happen to, well, I'm a Crows fan. Yep. So oh, there's two of you. I know. You know, 
<laughs> electric little mowers, oh, curse hands. <laughs> um, we really flocked together. We did. And um, it, it annoyed me when the crows were salary breaching and things like that. Yeah. So if it is something that you're passionate about, it almost feels like betrayal is a strong word, but it's sport. It's what you care about. Mm. And... See, because I, I, I support Carlton. And we also breached salary cap. But when we got done for it, it was kind of like, ah, oh, shit, we got found out, did we? <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's unfortunate. You know, and we didn't feel like we'd been betrayed by the club. We thought, ah, oh, we finally, uh, John Elliott finally got busted. But, ah, well, you know, <laughs> and still waiting for the team to recover. So. Yeah. <laughs> you kept the players that you overpaid as well, didn't you? Yeah, we did. We Ours did. left. Yeah, no, we got a few. Which was, a, all right, I'm glad we got rid of Tippett. Yeah, we're not yeah. happy about it. You know, yeah, 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 it worked yeah. out well. This um, one... So what do you think about the cricket? Have well, any interest? It's the one thing that I just find, you know, like obviously I always love the old gag that if you're not if you're not cheating, you're not trying. You know, and <laughs> and I'm always for like so when it comes to performance enhancing drug one, we've spoken about that. I don't see a problem in that because I know for the most part there's a lot of performance enhancing drugs mm-hmm. going on. That's you know, that's a it's a performance thing. It's one of those things where people just think, Oh, he took steroids so he's better at it. No, he took steroids, it helps him recover. And he can train harder, you know, and you can't just like, you know, like there's an old saying about Barry Bonds. You go, well, you can't just take a whole tub of testosterone and put on Barry's uniform and hit 500 mm, home runs. Yep. You know, I mean, like you need to train and practice. And, you know, the steroids may have helped, but it didn't make him who he was. You yeah. know, and you still need that natural talent. But when it comes to things like that, where you're tampering with the playing, like the, like, it's like, you know, if we're like, oh, the 36ers were playing and the basket down the other team's end was a little bit smaller. You know, like, it's just like, it's just that ruins the integrity of the game to me. Like, you know, like, there's always going to be, when it comes to the actual performers, that's fine. But you tamper with the, like, the rules of the game, that's when, you know, it that's when it gets it. carnival sport. It, it does. It just gets you know. a real grey area for me. And I just, I don't know, like, I'm glad that they've come down as hard as they did. You know, and everyone's like, oh, well, you know, like, like, Faf did it, like, the South African captain he only got one game banned it's like mm. yeah but Australia's always like and because I'm very big on being hypocritical <laughs> and how many times have we thrown the fucking book at the Sri Lankans oh. and the Pakistanis the and oh we oh. love oh they they tailored the wicket so Murali can take more and oh and we, we oh always disgraced and disgusted and stuff like that so it's like well if we've done, been busted doing the same thing we need to have the same shock yep. at ourselves and I think that's what the reflection is that's the reason why everyone has been so up in arms is because you know that's the one thing that we were always like, oh, no, 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 we're, we're gentlemen, we play a gentleman's game. You know, the, the English may have used lollies to get some reverse swing, but we would never do that. We'd rather lose proudly. And the thing is, I don't know why they cheated, because Australians will forgive you quicker for losing mm-hmm. than they will for cheating. So why take that risk? Yeah, I don't know. I, th- I think the whole series was a bit of a mess, obviously. They had the, the big sledging incident in the first test, and then um, they had the big bump. Yeah. which got then overturned, so everyone was upset about that. So I think it was really, so yeah, it was a real bit of a, real bit of a mess, the whole uh, the series. So I think, obviously, they were clutching, they were, they, were, they were going to lose that test, and it was obviously, you know, it was bad feeling. So someone's probably come up with the idea, yeah. and then they fucking run with it. Come up with it, it's fucking David Warner. Yeah, <laughs> if yeah, he's yeah. shown us anything, it's, he is the biggest scumbag in Australian sports right now. <laughs> and you know me, I'm all for the scumbag you athlete. Love scumbag. I love a scumbag, yeah. but he's just got just dick about it. Like he's just, yeah. There's just something about him. He has like one of those, like I, I said it last week watching the footy because I'm a huge Carlton fan, hate Richmond. Oh yeah. I always say that no one in the AFL has a more punchable face than Jack Rewalt. Oh, when yeah, no yeah, one yeah. in cricket has a more punchable face than David Warner. <laughs> just the uh, the self-importance and it just, oh, it's, yep. and he's always had it. He's carried around that arrogance and it's sort of, you know, like he has his moments, he has been good, but he'll do something like this time and time again that you just makes you go, nah, nah, can't warm to him. They go past scumbag into dickhead. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, I don't want to talk to that bloke. I don't want to drink with that bloke. Yeah. Oh, no, you definitely wouldn't want to drink. No. Like I said, with this this current cricket team, A, there's a lot of kids I don't know, and B, there's no one I could really relate to. You know, like when oh, the Steve War teams obviously were the greatest. Yeah. But, you know, you were like, fuck, I wouldn't mind going out for a beer with Hayden and, uh, and Roy. You know, like. <laughs> and, Hayden, and Hayden will whip you up a salad. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, it's got mango and bacon and all those weird ones. That you well, that's, that's, up. Is my favourite thing in the history of cricket is uh, listening to uh, Richie in one of the tests talking about um, uh, how Hayden proposed to his girl as wife now. Yep. And it was just, you know, those afternoon plays where they're just talking shit because they're just trying to fill time. Yeah. And he just tells this whole story and he goes, and he tells the story about how he proposed and he goes, and he prepared her dish of the garlic prawns, <laughs> proposed marriage, and she inevitably said, yes. And it was just like, it was like, why did you need to mention the garlic prawns? You know, like everyone knew Hayden can cook, but he just had to drop in that he made some garlic prawns before he proposed. Did he, he proposed. Was, sponsored? Oh, was it around the time? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
definitely would have had some. Yeah, it was probably releasing a book or something, maybe. Oh, Launching yeah. a book, said, drop in the garlic prawns with you. <laughs> <laughs> you know? a free copy for you, Richie. Yeah, page 27. Check it out. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, they, look, they all got, well, him and Smith got 12 months. Yep. Um, and Bancroft, I think, got nine months or yep. something like that. Now, what did Smith get with the leadership group? Because I know Warner's been banned for life from the leadership yeah, group. Yeah, he said 12 months, he, or two years, it might have been, something like so that. So, Smith, he, he got less be, than Warner? Warner can't be in a leadership forever. Oh, okay, so leadership, he got leadership for life as well. That's what I heard the yep. day before yesterday. Yep, yep. And that then, does feel like the, oh, we didn't really want him in there much anyway. Yeah. Can so I, I throw him too? I Steve thought, we like. I thought Steve only got like a yeah. year ban yeah, from the leadership right. group. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And Warner got a lifetime ban from that's leadership correct, group. Yeah. That is just, that's that's the Australian cricket team going, yeah, we do reckon he's a dick too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you hear what they were saying it was going to cost Smith? Because he can't go and play. Oh, he can't play IPL, no. Wait, can he, are you no, sure he can't play can't, IPL? No, 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 and they stood him down and then pending what happened. Yeah. And then they said it's ineligible. So he'll be uh, three point something million. Million dollars out, yeah. Yeah. Over the next couple of years. months. For yes. 12 months. Yeah, okay. Well, it's going to hurt. Yeah. Well, it's going to hurt. Especially in Sydney. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Cost that much, I think, just to get to work in Sydney. So you think 12 months is, uh, you know, I mean, that, I guess that's my question. Is, is you it's, know, I mean, it's, it's that stiff a penalty. It's a very stiff yeah. penalty. I think it's almost too stiff. But it's one of those ones where they wanted to go, all right, we're well, going to make sure that they miss next summer. Because Australians, for the most part, during winter, we don't care too we much forget. about cricket. Yeah, if yeah. it was six months and you just missed winter, yeah. like the, you know, the Northern Hemisphere summer season, we wouldn't really care as much. But now that he's going to miss an entire Australian summer, that's where it's going to really make a difference. And it's all that talk of like, it's still happening. Um, they knew it was happening. That's why they investigated. That's why they told him to put cameras on it. It may turn into more. Yeah. And... Just the one thing to add on to that, Boof, you trying to bullshit people tell us you didn't know? <laughs> you're full of shit. Don't bag on Boof, I'm on Boof. No. Mate, the fact that he tried to go, oh, I didn't know what they were doing. It's like, mate. Oh, shit, we got caught on camera. Yeah, mm. it's just like like with the college basketball, Rick Pitino <laughs> with Louisville. Oh, I didn't know that my assistant coach were bringing hookers to try to recruit high school kids to come play basketball here. I had no idea. Bull fucking <laughs> shit, mate. You know everything that's going on in your We campus. all knew it. We made blue chips about it. Exactly. Like, what do you want? So you never you never were in a classroom and like the teachers at the front and you you and your mates at the back fucking around and no mate I, I was a straight A student yeah, you know I didn't go swear. to sc- oh. school. So people paid me to do that test. Yeah. So, but if I got caught, I kept yeah. the money. I'm you you come to Pawsville like me, mate. And, you know, you know hey, all the you know, shortcuts. Do you know, know where I live? Where do you live? <laughs> Craigmore. There you go. Nice, nah, yeah. man. Look at this, man. I'm, I'm super like, poor. Like, yeah, about it. Northern suburbs yeah, uniting here. That's right. Damn. But we're, we're going to try to separate these two now because they're, they're developing a bit of bromance. And <laughs> Don't I like let him put it. a wedge in his teeth. Don't let him do it. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to talk about a, a special subject. We're going to talk about wrestling. Yeah, yeah. And Steve, <laughs> as you can tell by Steve's, uh, Steve's demeanor. Strong. Wrestling is, uh, has, has hurt Steve recently. <laughs> I think because we always shared a mutual dislike for the current product and just pine for the old days of, of Kevin Nash and Scott Hall. <laughs> yes. Right. Just those God. two, basically. <laughs> yeah, it does it. So, yeah. But recently, I, I was involved with a, uh, a show called World Series Wrestling, International Assault Tour, and uh, I got to work on a show with uh, the Young Bucks and Cody Rhodes. Uh, sorry, not Cody Rhodes. Uh, Young Bucks and Austin Aries. Marty Skrull. Marty Skrull. Uh, household the names. Household names. Well, these are for for the independent scene. These are for all three hundred and seventy five fans in the house. Yeah, okay, okay. They have a web show that gets over to twelve thousand people. <laughs> two hundred thousand subscribers. There you go. Ugh. But you know, it's doing okay, Steve, for a nice little show. I mean, compared to us, that we get making over a million in merch every year. Exactly, we get tens of listeners on this show. <laughs> <laughs> They're not quite have the reach that we have. We Look, have I'm going to share it on Facebook. We'll make it 12. That's See how well, we we have someone in Sweden listening, uh, so what? shout out to the Swedish person. What are they back in Australia? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably one of my old clients. <laughs> right. But I got to enjoy some of the current wrestling. And this is where me and Steve have had a bit of divide and I needed Jared's help to sort of, you know, get over. Because there is a lot going on right now in wrestling. And there's a bit of a sea change. Now, WWE, I still can't watch. It's just unwatchable. The characters aren't there. But this young crop of sort of the independent guys and some guys that have left and chosen to leave WWE and forge an own path have really impressed me. But Steve's not impressed. I hope the mic picked up how loud that sigh was from Steve. Yeah. <laughs> like, the computer swayed back and swayed forward. You can forward. actually t- hear his heart breaking. <laughs> We don't have any post production here, so <laughs> it might be our like first time. Oh, we'll do some, we'll do some signs, yeah. and we'll try to insert Drop it. Some yeah, so yeah. Fourteen minutes in, get your reactions. Yeah, yeah. But Steve. So, what what is it about the current product that you just can't stand? You know what it's about the current product. Well, okay, the, okay. Once again, me and you have this conversation, but we broadcast. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> so I'm happy to hear it. From exactly. So yeah, tell tell the listeners, Steve. Uh, tell the listeners. Look, uh, 
I don't know where to start. It's just, I've never been... Okay, so how are we going to... We'll try to break it down. The actual in-ring action in the first place. Can yeah. we talk about the in-ring action? Yeah. You, 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 you lead me where you want to go, but uh, in-ring... I don't like the over... The, the over... All right, let's say, let's say Hulk Hogan, right? Yeah. You know, he got big... What, he did about four moves, yep. five moves. Yep. John Cena. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's what they did and how they did it yep. to make it believable, which is funny. I know it's wrestling, yeah. you know. but And Hulk Hogan used to just shake off pain and that's fine. Yes, okay, okay. run with it. Um, <laughs> where's this Big old... Papa Shango fan for real? No, 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 no right. not, not down with that thing. But look, <laughs> I get it. I get, you know, I get what I'm saying. You know, you get, you'll be able to poke holes in it. I yeah. get that. And so what I say, I expect you to have a response. But the the wrestling to me, even, to, you know, when I was watching Sting versus Triple H, there was this element of, you know, what they did just seemed like, ah, oh, legit. I don't, I don't know. It's hard to say. You know, I'd buy into it. I'd be like, you know what? I'm buying into this. Where the, the stuff I see today is this over-choreographed, over um, you know the, the way they run the ropes. You know, as a wrestler, it drives me up the wall. You know, the the little takedowns, the, the flick behind the ankle, and that takes the mother the dude down. You know, like <laughs> why did you pull out of a swim? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wanted to go harder. Go for know. gold, Steve. Go it's, for gold. It's, it's everything is 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 it's just an over choreographed, ridiculous. And like I said, I know wrestling is generally ridiculous. Yes. I get it, but there's levels of ridiculousness, and the stuff that I see today, the whole. The, croc, uh, the crotch grab dick fucking thing is like, give me a fucking break. You're going in on Joey Ryan. He is. Yeah, I don't I didn't care who he was. He's a guy who didn't make <laughs> WWE. Uh, yeah, I saw these Japanese guys who were doing this kissing thing. It's like the kiss and the, oh, can you believe he kissed him? Oh, and they're kissing. And they're, I'm like, and then the other one that I showed you with a thumb up the ass. Yeah. And they all got in a big conga line with a thumb up the ass. And the crowd was eating it up. I was like... Because there's it always really going to be comedy me, in wrestling. But it wasn't even comedy, man. It was just absolute... But ridiculous. you're talking about like you're talking about some of the, the really obscure stuff. Well, I know, but this is the stuff that the but people like are said, What behind. have you seen of like this year, a yeah. show produced and, and wrestled on this year? Yeah. 2018. Have you watched anything from 2018 that's not WWE? I just... Why don't we watch WWE? <laughs> so, uh, I've, I, I watch... Look, I'm obviously I'm still... Intertwine with the wrestling world. Yep. Um, I've got still a lot of uh, connections, and they share shit. So I, I do see spots and bits and pieces. Okay. I've not seen a show from start to finish. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't particularly pay for. It. Sorry to shit on you guys, but I wouldn't pay to see it either. Um, it look, it's, just, just this coming from a promotion a promoter <laughs> who has in past. Begged people to pr- yeah. to pay to attend a show, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> somebody had so, the pass, man. Yeah, if you, um, <laughs> all I'm saying is we're probably not run some shows this year, Steve. <laughs> haven't run a show in the last couple of years because of this movement. Look, the way I see, <laughs> the way I see it is like, look, I'm not knock, I'm not doubting that they've got fans. I'm not doubting that they've got themselves. A, it's it's kind of like an ECW. It's like a movement. Yeah. You know, it's like you know, oh, it's an alternative. So people are going to jump on the alternative. It's going to be a small market, mm. and I don't, you know, you go, oh, they've got you know ten thousand viewers, this and the other, but it is a small market. Uh, good on them. It's just not my thing, man. That, that's, the thing is, well, I win them over because they've tapped into the market that was available. Wrestling forever started from carnivals. It was sold as real competition. Mm-hmm. Blah 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 blah. We know how it happened there. UFC came in and fucking ruined the wrestling industry because it showed what a real fight actually looks like. I, I've said it before. Wrestling matches were, appeared real because you watched movies and they fought the same way in movies as they did in wrestling. And so everyone kind of went, oh, that's how a real fight goes. But then you saw UFC and went, oh, no, that's not how a real fight goes. <laughs> no. And everyone kind of learned. So then now it's just gone, okay, well, if we're going to be wrestling, we've got to be entertainment. And they've gone the entertainment route. And that's where they have to go because you can't sell it as real anymore. But you can sell, like I said, you can sell the disbelief there. And that's what they're going for. Now, the action is a lot faster than it used to be. Because of the nature of the actual wrestlers, hmm. you know, I mean, like it could be slower and 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 a little bit harder hitting back in the day because the guys were fucking jacked, you know. I mean? But everyone's yeah. sort of no one's on the gear anymore, no one's you know these huge larger than life people anymore. Well, what about the lucha guys? You know, remember the lucha guys, the rays and the yeah. hooventudes. Yeah, there was even something about that which it does not go down the route that they because are today. It, it, that was like because that was the good thing about that was if you sat there and watched an entire show of that. You probably would have fucking hated it. 
Yeah, probably. But the maybe, thing yeah, is, yeah, that yeah, was yeah, the time. beauty of that time. I mean, like I said, you. Uh, it always goes back to that WCW era was perfect because it had your top Everything. guys, your Hogan's, that sort of stuff. They were a bit slower and they told their stories, had great characters. Then you had your up and coming guys like your Benoit's Booker T's that could put on these really fast paced matches that were cool. And then you had your little lucha door guys that could jump around and fly around and kind yeah. of. It was like the three ring circus. Everyone got a bit of what they that's wanted. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now that's what they're trying to do. But the only difference is rather than doing the this, 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 they'll have your serious sort of match, you'll get your story over, and then they're throwing in a lot more comedy in wrestling shows. And that's what the hook is, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So And and that's fair enough. But sometimes, man, as I said to you the other day, the comedy to me, like yep. I said, you know, this is only my opinion. Uh, the comedy to me, it always looks more directed to the guys in the back. As yep. you know, uh, when you wrestle, um, you've done obviously a few matches. Um, you know, when you're not wrestling, you're usually at the back and you have a look at what the other guys are doing. Uh, you're looking at what they're doing because you don't want to obviously step on their toes and, and you want to take away from your match. You want to look because you're supporting them um, and whatever. So you're always looking through the curtain or the screen or whatever. To me, the comedy that you talk about is the guys actually going, hey, Barry in the back there, check this one out. And they do it and it's almost like a, you know, they is, it, it, there's a term called popping the boys, which, by the way, I don't like, but that's what they say. Popping the boys. Oh, that boy. Popping the boys. That What that means is that they're, they're wrestling, not necessarily wrestling, but they're doing that for the boys in the back. So then they can all go back at, afterwards and tap each other on the bum and say, that was heaps funny. Oh, that was heaps funny what you did. And that bothers me as well, you know? Like, I, you, I feel like you're the kid that's been excluded from the cool kid group at school. There's nothing cool <laughs> about the wrestling crowd, all right? Believe me, uh, I've seen it. I've come out. I've walked out. But you're, just, just sounding, you're sounding like a jilted ex-lover, Steve. Oh, uh, Maybe, it, but, you it, know, it I feel like, like you like cheated on me, man. I feel like you've been cheating on me with this new, like, you know. Like I said, I love, I love performing. Like, however I'm going to perform, I'm going to perform. Hence why we started this show. I need I need an avenue to, to, to an, get out an what's an inside album, of me, yeah. yeah. I and that was and the thing is I like said I oh, you know me I pushed back on wrestling for a long time but then to watch what happened at that show just to because my big thing is crowd reaction like Cody put up a, a Cody Rhodes put up a post the other day people that don't think The Rock and and Austin uh, sorry The Rock and Hulk Hogan isn't the best WrestleMania match of all time don't get wrestling and I know exactly what he means it's yeah. based on can you get people to create a huge reaction. And that's what it's all about. You know what I mean? Like you can put on the coolest moves and the coolest sequence and the coolest order and blah, 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 blah. If you, you know, if you watch it and there's no crowd reaction, it's terrible. You know what I mean? Like even like something like that. that was really cool at the time, but that empty arena match they had with, with The Rock and, and, and Mankind, Mick Foley. Yep. That was a really cool match, but you can't, you can't watch it too many times because there's no emotion behind it because there's no crowd. I yeah. mean, that was the whole basis behind it, but... You know, we we're talking about that other match where where Mick Foley wins the title for the first time on Raw. That moment where Stone Cold Steve Austin's music hits and the whole crowd stands up, both hands go up, and they are really into it. That's the greatest part of that thing. And this is what I'm trying to get you all crowned to, Steve, is don't look at it as I don't enjoy what they're doing. I want you to enjoy it as look at the reactions they're creating. That's what won it over for me. I, I sat upstairs because there was a... Arena that has upstairs bit, and I got to sit upstairs and watch down to the, so I got to watch the main event. And it was, a, I'll be honest with you, it was the first time I'd seen the Young Bucks perform. Like I'd heard about them, I'd, same thing, I'd seen all the clips, hadn't really seen them. It was them and Marty Skrull versus the Briscoes and Austin Aries. And once again, Briscoes were guys from Ring of Honor that I heard about, ah, they just do this, 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 they're just spot monkeys, don't care. So I kind of like, mm, once again, not my cup of tea too, same as you. And I, I, I sort of, you know, disavowed them but then I got to watch them perform and but wasn't even so much what they did they didn't do a whole lot because essentially for them it's like a house show they're not going to kill themselves but the responses they can get from the crowd is what's making it so special and that's why I think you need to come to a show Steve you need to enjoy it because the crowd was almost singing along like it was a soccer game you know what I mean? like they are just they, they want to be part chants. of the show yeah and they, yeah. they they bring the chance with them and stuff like that and I haven't got one myself, and I was pretty rut with it. You know, like so. But it was just if, if people are going to bring that sort of energy, that's what it needs to be, and that's what if, if crowd reactions there, then what the guys are doing in the ring is perfect. Jared, you obviously went. Yes, I you was went there. to the show, and, sure and was. you know these guys. You've, I know those you've guys. Seen them. So tell me, tell me what you like about because I'm curious because Speed just said then he goes, you know, the crowd comes along with their songs and stuff like that. To me, one of my other arguments is that you know the, the crowd does that because it's become. This, this new this new age stuff where the, the crowds as much of the show as the 
the wrestlers are. And sometimes too much. Right. Yeah. So tell me, you know, did you get involved in the in the chants? And and if if so, why? I mean, you know, and 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 why do you why do you get in it? Is it just because you want the show to be awesome, or you know, like when Austin and them come in and they're like, yeah, that's a that's a neat jerk react. That's an action action based on emotion. To me, the fan crowds now is 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 it part of the the choreography of the show. They're like, I'm going to do this bit, stomp, 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 and everyone goes, and that's the Terminator theme. Yeah. You know, it's different than when Austin glass breaks, and we're like, yeah, well, all, you know, do you know, do you see the difference here? You know, like, it seems like the audience are like, yeah, this is our part to be, uh, time to be part of the show. Yada, yada. Sorry, I keep... <laughs> that's all right, no. Um, I think that's comparing apples and oranges, the Stone Cold entrance with the Terminator clap. Okay. Because the Terminator clap is a specific move. Yeah, you know that's their dive in, get up, dive out the ring. Yeah, so that's more like um, pop for the people's elbow, oh, or the when the crowd music, yeah. music. Yeah, crowd goes. I see it as like start. okay, so imagine Hulk's in the sleeper. Yep, arm goes up, yep. falls down. Yep. Arm goes up, Ooh. falls down. Yeah, third arm comes up, starts <gasps> waving the finger. <laughs> That's him. So he's doing the same thing. To me, that's more of an emotion thing. That's not a, this is our turn to chant uh, thing. That's a difference. But if Proceed. You, Acting but like Hogan you... never started a USA chant. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Or a USA outfit. Yeah. Right. Um, but that's because you may not have seen him before. Okay. So you didn't cheer like that for Hulk Hogan on the very first time he did that. Yeah. Because it didn't mean anything to you. Right. So when the Terminator thing happens for the first time and you've never seen it, you go, I have no idea what's happening. Yeah. But I recognize this. But when you've seen 10, 15 of their matches, you're invested. Suddenly that means something. Suddenly you are cheering on your favorites. Are you cheering because you're like, yeah, this is exciting? Or are you cheering because... It's my role to now to cheer along with this move. It's my role as a crowd member not, to it's, go. It's not so much as their role; it's just something they they actually genuinely look forward to. You know, I mean, like you watch. Everyone wanted to pop for Austin doing the stunner or drinking the beers. Yeah. You're waiting for that moment. You know, what I mean? this is they're just all they do now is they give those moments throughout the match rather than just doing the one big one at the end. They do it throughout, and so people. I mean, same thing. Everyone has their signature moves that people want to get excited to see. These guys are just sort of adding to that. Like I said, the one the one you're picking on is the is the Terminator clap for the dive. <laughs> no, no, it's a good it's a good but example. But that's that's a good is, example. But I'm saying, but there's other moves that they do. You know, they set up for their super kicks. Yeah, Marty Skrull does this one where he grabs their fingers, sets it up to make a thing where he makes it look like he's breaking their fingers, and it's a great spot. But you know, that's what he kept doing. Kept grabbing the hand. Ooh, you know, like there's just a lot of that going on. And it gives the crowd, like I said, it allows them to suspend their disbelief because they're involved. You know what I mean? If you feel like you're involved, then you can suspend your disbelief because you're waiting for your moment to be in it. You know what I mean? Like, because they're kind of sitting there like, it's almost like they're about to get into double dutch and they're about to start skipping. You know, as opposed to they're, they're not watching it now and just clapping spots. They're waiting for their part to get involved. And so if they're involved in that bit, then they care about the finish. So it is an emotional but thing. But also, we're... we're... This, converse, this argument is literally just <laughs> doing two generalizations of an audience. Yeah. So, for example, I'm cheering because I like the spot that's coming up and because I'm cheering for that team. Whereas a kid might literally just want to see a guy jump out of a ring. Yeah. So, but that's always been the case. Look, it, I, look, I can understand what you're saying, but to me, it's, it's still a little bit different. I feel like, to me, it's it's like them doing it and then you're know, holding up the cue cards in the crowd. It's time to clap. It's time to stomp. Hang it's on. time to. So when the Rock takes his elbow pad slowly, Off. like time stops, that's not a cue. Like I said, what I said before, <laughs> that, I can see that you're gonna be able to pick holes in my arguments. No, I no, get that. I'm just trying to compare similar items, yeah, yeah, so yeah. you can see that. I just, you think, it's just, it's starting to sound like it's just that you just don't, you like, it's passed you by. And you're not enjoying, like, you've got your guys that you like and you don't want to, it's like, oh, like my dad listens to old music and he doesn't want to listen to new music. Nah, music stopped being good in the 70s. <laughs> you know, like that's, and that's it's what you're starting to sound like, Steve. You, you are, I mean, if I walk past in your house, if I head out that way ever, which I won't, but <laughs> <laughs> if I did, I feel like if I even tiptoed on the Santa Ana, I'd be, get off my lawn. <laughs> that's, that's what you're starting to sound like, You're going to lose a tone. No, no, that, that's more. true. That's what will happen. Yeah, yeah. That's not what I'm sounding like. Look, it's, just, it's not my thing. Um, I have got a, a pass to watch the next uh, Riot City Wrestling show. There you go. I've got the night off. of uh, So I'm going to come in and, and check out 
So I haven't, I haven't been to a live wrestling show since probably the shows that we put on a couple of years ago. Yeah. So, and uh, I know there's lots of kids who wrestle, so I'll come along and, and, and I'll, I'll suspend my uh, judgment until I see... Uh, well, what we need you to do, Steve, is... Because I'm not going to agree with you guys. I'm not going to say we, I enjoy this. Well, of course you're shit. not going to agree with us, because that's just <laughs> you. Right. Yeah, it's not exactly. going to happen. There's no... Okay. <laughs> but what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit you down next to Jared, Okay. And we're going to get you into the sort of shape that you were pre-live recording, <laughs> which was about four or five beers deep. Right. Uh, and no, I reckon I'm you more might... than happy to join. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think you're really going to be surprised with what what you enjoy, Steve. Look, uh, but like I said, you know, I, I can watch. Yeah, I can. I can have four or five beers. I'll enjoy anything. So yeah. that that's not <laughs> that's not a fair indication. Well, let's get gentle. Like, what like, are we like, doing? Like, so, yeah. Oh, dude. Um, but I mean, at the same time, like you're saying, there are there is some stuff. You know, people were saying that, for example, Will Osprey, who people consider the top five wrestlers in the world. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see. I think that's. I mean, he's one. Like I said, I'm, I'm all for the new school guys. I think he does a bit too much. Yeah. That's and it. him and Ricochet, and then that was in the top two matches that people had, and that is all that flipping, that smack in the legs, the that, spring backboards, the just present a gold medal and stand on a dais. Like it's, yeah, it was that's it was gymnastics very gymnastics. Me. Yeah. yeah. Um, whereas, that match I didn't care for. Whereas a match like uh, Omega versus Akata, which is all big brutal hits and actual wrestling moves as well, mm. you hear the crowd build because no one can hit a finish. Because in the more traditional wrestling stuff, like. Kenny needs to hit his finisher. There was that yeah. tag match the other day with uh, the Young Bucks and Kenny and um, Ibushi. Yeah. Well, they did a New Japan Strong Style show, but in America. What won me over is it felt like an old NWA show. It felt like I was watching Rock and Roll Express versus like Tully and I. You know what I mean? Like that's what it, the whole match felt like. You know, the, the Young Bucks are basically the new version of the Rock and Roll Express. Like they just pretty much ripping off the gimmick and it's but it's great it just works because now they've got to the stage where i mean yeah they do a lot of flippy stuff but that's kind of what expected for guys their size that's what the you know that's yeah. the, the paradigm shift with wcw and if you're under six foot and you know maybe 85 kilos mate you better learn how to do a couple backflips otherwise yeah. people are going to boo you and they've embraced that but then they've, they've now learned how to work it in you know, and now that they've, they've got themselves over by being the spot monkeys, and now they've actually really started developing characters, which is actually what really impressive. And that whole tag match yep. was a really good, it was really long. It was one of those 35, 36 minute tag matches, but it told a great story about, you know, Kenny's their friend too, and he doesn't want to fight them, but he has to because he's got his new tag partner now and stuff. But so they just, I think you just need to give it a chance. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I think Martin just had to sit down, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a couple of beers. Yeah. And then we'll sit down and watch some some new stuff. Like I said, there's there's going to be some new stuff that's terrible too. Don't oh. I'm not I'm not defending oh, all new wrestling, but I just think at the moment there's this this movement with the uh, the elite guys, the Bullet Club guys. They're they're doing their own show, this All In, where they're putting up their own money to try to get ten thousand people to a venue. Now, if they can pull this off, I honestly believe this is going to be like one of those WrestleMania one moments where it's like, well, maybe you don't need the WWE machine anymore to quote unquote make it you know and they, are they they may have creating a second level that's just a step behind what wwe is almost creating what we had with wcw so it's creating a another avenue for people to enjoy because it's just been for too long now it's been wwe or nothing and i think they've taken advantage of that and the wwe has just gotten terrible lazy just like we we've debated not even debated we've agreed many times that it's just not as entertaining as it used to be. So I think this is, it's creating a different avenue, which is always better for the wrestlers and it's always better for the product because you need a bit of competition. So that's why I, I'm behind it. I'm supporting it. I think there's a market for it. And I think there's a way that sort of, it can take a lot of the old wrestling fans and give them a little bit of what they want mixed with the new stuff. And, you know, like Cody Rhodes at the moment is essentially being Hulk Hogan from the NWO. It is classic it's if, if you can get yourself in he's all attitude and no in ring that's right his in ring is actually getting worse yep but if anything that's making him less. a better yeah. wrestler you know because he's doing less and he's oh, character less more so yeah. it's that's one of the things that's really strong like i said it, it's got him doing the character kenny's your your great wrestler you know and your young bucks do your, your cool gimmicky tag matches so you're getting, the once again, you're getting that three-ring circus, you're getting a bit of everything. You've got the guy that you hate, the guy that you want to get behind, 
and and the, and the tag teams doing their thing as well. So and the faction thing that the NWO yeah and, and the Bullet Club thing yeah. and they're having the little the, the greatest thing I just love at the moment they have they're doing the thing where the Bullet Club is splitting up you know and they're all turning against each other. But every time there's a press conference, Bullet Club's fine. Bullet Club's fine. Like Cody just keeps getting running. No, Bullet Club's fine. He's going to ask questions. No, Bullet Club's fine. You know, and even though they've just fought each other, like literally two seconds before, he was just, you know, it's like he's punching him and still holding there and turning to the camera. No, nah, they're fine. We're it's fine. It's a guy in a breakup. Yeah. It's, he it's, doesn't know it's ending. Exactly. And, she's already packed. Exactly. And, you know, we, we've got friends that understand what that's like. No, but, uh. <laughs> so, hey, folks, uh, uh, early on in our podcasting days, we had a show, it was called The Stitch Up. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, you have to understand. I, I've met Jared once before, and I, and uh, I just can't help but think that uh, you know I haven't invited any of my friends on the show. Oh, this is this is a return no, because we, when we went to a, a quiz night, and Steve wrote questions <laughs> specifically for speed. I'm looking out for him specifically. There was no way I could win that. <laughs> yeah, and let speed never What's looks speed's out middle name. What uh, <laughs> side of the bed does speed wake up on? <laughs> I don't know. I never sleep over. <laughs> In the words of the Australian cricket team, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. <laughs> but we're going to move on because it's uh, we're recording this on a Thursday before Easter. So we'll come out next week. We'll be past Easter by the time this will come out. But we're going to tap into one of our favourite topics, food. <laughs> now, boys, it's become a new thing now. <laughs> it used to just be regular and fruitless. Yeah. Yep. I went to the fucking Woolies today. <laughs> Hot cross buns, right? Yeah. There is nine different varieties of hot cross buns. They had apple and cinnamon. They had chopped oh, chip. What? They had fruitless. They had with fruit. fruit. Chocks. They had mini. They had fruit chop. They had brioche. Fr- uh, All right, they're good. delicious. Let's not get crazy. Yeah, oh, well, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doubting they're delicious, but I'm just saying, is it too much with the hot cross bun now? Have they done too much? The indie wrestling of hot cross buns. Everything in there. Oh, um, granddad's in here. Just missed to get my shit in. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the question because it, not only does it go like those varieties of hot cross buns, it's what people are putting on them. Oh yeah. Oh, I heard because I, I love the chocolate hot cross buns. Oh, no. yeah, okay. you put no. them in the microwaves. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and they just fucking they melt in your mouth. Yeah. Um, but I was telling the dude at work that day, and he goes, "Yeah, you got to put peanut butter on them." Oh, wow. I was like, "What do you mean?" There's a lot going on. Now, there. admittedly, yeah, I did see someone this morning across the road at the cafe did ask for peanut butter on a piece of fruit toast. And that blew my mind. Smooth was, or crunchy? Oh, mate, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. matter. Doesn't doesn't matter. matter. <laughs> there's, just, there's just two things that shouldn't be together. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, with the with the hot cross bun, you just need to stay with the. Tr- I'm I'm a traditional, a little bit of sultanas in there, toasted if you can, a little bit of butter, you're good money. Yeah. Now, old mate Jared, not uh, this Jared, but other mate Jared that Start I work with. Call me Jay. This is gonna get crazy. Oh yeah, you're Jay, <laughs> yeah. and old mate Jared. Who you know he's actually standing in the room right now and doesn't actually want to be involved in the podcast, but I'm going to talk him out at him anyway. He puts uh, some jam and and cream on his on his on hot cross scone. on his hot cross oh, bun. On what? Yeah, no, no, he's he's taking it to full scone mode. Is that nan recipe? I don't know. <laughs> it's, he's handed down. He's from the country, so <laughs> we allow. I mean, few that things. feels like a cheap shot on your part. Yeah, <laughs> just to call him out on that. But yeah, that is that doing too much? It's up there with the peanut butter. Because he swears it's delicious, and I'll, I'll trust him. It did well, look pretty delicious. It, I might give it a burl because I, I I don't do cream, but I like jam. A no a no fruit. No, I reckon in a fruit one, but just jam, like strawberry jam in it. I'll try that, but I thought so the I jam and cream is doing cream a lot. On a non fruit one, yeah, then it is yeah. just a fancy scone. Yeah, Actually, yeah. I, t- I tend to agree. I love how serious you guys are taking this, by the way. This is really helping. To be honest, I'm always stroking my beard. So it always <laughs> looks like I'm about to say something prolific or yeah. intelligent. It's just not. I literally shaved off everything yesterday. Yeah. I'm not sure if you noticed. I've got a little bit left on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, because... very 90s goatee. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. But... I feel like you're in some sort of Kevin Smith movie. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's because I look remotely like him. And you're just having flashbacks. That's fine. But what happened is that yesterday I was uh, totally off the hot cross bun, but I, I shave you know, probably once every week or so. And um, all I do is try to straighten up the edges and yep. stuff like that. And when you start fucking up the line, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. and then you try to fix it up the other side, yeah, and then a, before you know it, the whole thing was off. It's a steep slope. You yeah. end up with a beard that you're like, I didn't want this. Now, yeah, yeah. this. Yeah. And I can't shave everything off because I look like Homer when he shaves. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he's got like, and he looks like fucking, he's got no, that head, he's got that. So I had to leave something on my face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is what I left. You should have just stayed with the mustache again. You did that earlier, yeah, and yeah. I was a big fan of that. Yeah. You're a dad, you can pull it off. I know. I You're know. a dad to two kids, so 
So you yeah. well and truly, oh, no. yeah. you know. But when I'm walking in town, people don't know that. They start pulling their kids yeah, closer. No, yeah. no, they stay away from me, man. Yeah. Did you have just the moustache the other week when you were walking past people and they were making <laughs> <laughs> deliberate non-eye contact with they you? They do. It happens no matter what, man. I, I'm still annoyed about that. Yeah. I'm still, I still get upset with that. Just weird sniffing because it's early morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is, but anyway, this is why I've ended up. I wanted to explain to you guys when I got here. Yeah. Because I saw you look at me and go, uh huh. Um, yeah, so I did want to. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, no, thank you. Uh, I don't. But anyway, he's <laughs> an arsehole. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm pro any form of beard in yeah. any shape. There we go. That's uh, fair. And I saw your throwback wrestling picture where you had something remarkable. Oh, it's similar very to that. similar to Goaty. Yeah, I, I did. Ro- I think there's reason why. How did why. you do it worse? Oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> it's I've been growing that thing since I was 14. Had that when he was 12, though. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> we had this when I was 12. So that's just. But so, so we'll just wrap up. We'll wrap it up a nice little bow. Back to the hot cross punch, guys. Yeah. So what are we going with? If you had to pick top two. You got um, obviously you're going chocolate. Yeah, but I just, before we do, uh, maple syrup and bacon on them. Ooh. Yeah, that's another one someone's thrown that at me. Yeah, cinnamon. Yeah. Maple See, syrup na- and okay. bacon. Well, there we go. I'll go with ice, like a traditional bit of fruit yeah. in there, bit of butter. Yeah. yeah. But I reckon now that you've just uh, divulged that one, I think bacon and maple syrup in one of those brioche ones um, could be delicious or a fucking train yeah. wreck. But I'm willing to give it a <laughs> there try. Is, there, there is no middle ground on that. Yeah. That will make you vomit. Or it's all you'll have for the rest of your yeah. life. Yeah. Well, I'm going chocolate. I love chocolate. And I'm, I'm a traditionist. So I just like the normal un, in, under the grill, bit of butter on there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy with that, man. And I'm Jay, big Jay. Traditional butter. Uh, we're big on the mini ones because I've got a three year old daughter. Yeah. Okay. So she can Sweet. just have, that's her size. Yeah. yeah. So I'm happy with that. Nice. There we go. Everyone's happy. So let us know your favourite, guys. <laughs> Because I mean, it'd be, the rest. yeah. I mean, admittedly, by the time this comes out and you listen to it, you've probably spent the entire weekend eating way too many of them, and you're like, oh, I don't need to see another one of them until Christmas. But that's okay. But that's gonna be us for today, guys. We'll speak to you all next week. For speaker, I want to say goodbye, Steve Burrows. See you later. And the man, Big J. See you guys. And even other Jared, old mate Jared, give us a yell. Yo, we'll see ya. <laughs> we'll speak to you next week. Peace. Peace. Are you a podcaster? Maybe you've got that big idea and you're looking for a network to join. The multi-award winning OzCast Network can get your content to eyes and ears all over the world. Join now for the first month free and you could be featuring this sound at the beginning of your podcast. OzCast. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details.